Hands-On is sponsored in part by Elmer's Products Incorporated, manufacturers of a variety of adhesives, arts and crafts, and office products for use at home, school, or business for over 60 years. Elmer's.com Floracraft, the Dow Chemical Company, Styrofoam brand foam, make it fun. Floracraft.com Styrofoamcrafts.com Travel around the world on this season of Hands-On Crafts for Kids. We're visiting a different country each episode and learning about their culture and traditions through crafts. Every project has five steps and five main ingredients, plus you'll want to keep basic supplies like scissors and markers and toothpicks and even a ruler on hand. Remember, be creative. It's fine to change colors or patterns to make your project your own. So let's learn about different countries with fun craft ideas. Scotland is a part of the United Kingdom and is located west of the European mainland. The country is known for inventions and a respect for learning. Today's crafts honor the country's heritage and their important contributions to the world market. Scotland is the home to many castles. We'll learn a little bit about castle construction and create our own castle keep. Then it's time for a little knitting and fingerless gloves from Scottish Sheep. We then move on to a tartan pillow and our own clan colors. Finally, we take a Celtic design and create a woven design. Let's learn about the castle keep. Our first project is a castle keep. Towers or keeps are used to defend the castle. Many are round, though they can also be other shapes. If they were part of a town wall or the outer ring of a castle, they might be open in the back. This keep is in honor of Inverness Castle overlooking Riverness in Inverness, Scotland. Here's what you'll need. We're starting out with some little bricks of styrofoam that are a beige color. We have a sheet of acetate or you could use wax paper or even a plastic bag. This is an optional piece. We put some foam to hold the base of the castle keep. This is a little um, electric or a battery operated light. We've got some marbles, a couple craft sticks and some thick glue. Now the other things tools wise that you might need are some rubber bands, scissors, a craft knife if you have some adult supervision, and a plastic knife. Optionally too if you want to color your castle we've got some colored chalk and a very stiff brush. Let's get started because there's lots to do. Okay first of all the castle keep has six sides and three of the sides will have to fit into the other three sides and so it's interlocking we're going to create three of one style and three of another style. So to get started, the first thing we want to do is to glue four bricks together. Then we want to glue three, grip, three bricks together. And we're going to stack these all together so that we have a stack of 13. I've laid it on top of a piece of uh, wax paper, or like I said, you can use a plastic bag or a piece of acetate. And then I'm going to nestle that in. And now I have my stack of 13. Now there are, we're going to give you three different options for doing the windows and all the instructions will be on the website with patterns and the sizes. So now I've got this is one row. This would be we want to let that sit and dry. Now if, if we wanted to color it we would take a very very stiff brush and I'm going to start here where it's nice and dry and we could brush on colors and this would be the time you would want to do this before the castle is created. Now the most important thing is that each of these sections has to dry and if while they're drying you want to keep them very secure you can put a rubber band around them and then set them aside. So let's move this one to the side. So this is 
set number one. Remember, we need six. So this one starts with four bricks. Now this one here starts with three bricks. But instead of one of the rows of three, I've inserted what's going to be a row of windows. To make a row of windows, I'm going to take seven of these little, little clear marbles, and then I'm going to glue them in between two craft sticks. And it's as easy as that. And that's one style of window. Then again, I'm going to add glue on either side, on either one of the sticks, and glue that in between my rows. Again, remember, I still have 13 rows. This is counting as one of the rows, and it's counting as my row of three. So that would be one style of window. What we want to do then is create three stacks with starting with four and three stacks starting with three. Here's my one on the plastic bag, so I've got those. Now I have all my other pieces and parts laid out here. Now, you want to choose what kind of windows you want to make. We showed you one style there, which was the straight style. These are some other windows you might choose. To make any of these other style of windows, you would glue your beads together. You can actually go back and add some glue as grout in the middle, which looks really nice. And then you would cut a paper pattern to whatever size marbles you've used. So for example, if I wanted to cut a window in this hexagon shape, I would then lay it on my castle. Then with, with, um, I'd go back with my craft knight and etch that, in, that shape into exactly where I want it and then cut that shape out. Now I would suggest that you get some adult supervision and use a craft knife at this point to cut out this shape. And you have an option at this point of just cutting out that shape and leaving it open just like it probably would have been in ancient times or inserting the glass beads in the same shape to give a really nice design. The other thing that you can do is lay out a door pattern, same thing cut away, cut that piece away, and then you can have a door in your castle. So now we've got, we've got three, remember with four on the top and three with three, but they're still all 13. And I'm going to fit it together. Now, sometimes if this would be a good time to have a friend handy. I'm gonna notch the first one together. Now we just squeeze that in. Then I'm going to take, this is a four, so oops, let's take a three. If you need to, lay it flat, but they are really sturdy once the glue dries. Then we're going to take and add a four. Add another three. And then as my last one, I'm gonna use this one just so you can see what it looks like when it's all been colored. Now, as you noticed, I haven't added any glue yet. I want to get everything positioned and be sure it's where I need it to be before I start gluing everything together. Now I'm going to go back and really affix this and make sure it's nice and close. Take my glue and start gluing each piece in one at a time and make sure it's really nice and secure. The other thing that can, you can do is cut some bricks in half and put them along the top, kind of as the parapet. Now, if you look at our finished one, we've added the um, chalking on the outside to have that weathered look, a door. We can have even added a little circular window right above the door for people to look out. And that's our castle key. Our next project is a pair of fingerless gloves. Crofts or small farms are all over Scotland. In parts of the Highlands, sheep farms are very popular. Wool is an important part of the economy for yarn and fabric. Now let's see what we need to make our own pair of gloves. You'll need some plastic lacing, some glitter glue, a 100% wool sweater, some strong tacky glue, safety pins, scissors, and then small pointed scissors. Now, before you dig into cutting up a sweater, you'll want to throw it in the washing machine to felt it. That makes it a strong uh, piece of fabric that can't unravel when you cut into it. Now, what you want to do when you felt a sweater is put it in the washing machine, 
set the load to small, add a quarter of what you normally would of laundry detergent, and then let the machine do the work. When you lay out your sweater to cut into it, you're going to put the sleeve down on the table and then lay your hand on top. And this is where the arm of the sweater would normally go. And then mark kind of where you want to cut it and where you want the thumb hole. I've already cut mine so that my gloves will go, oh, about up to here on my arm. And then I want my thumb hole to go about right here. So I'm going to use the short pointed scissors to cut a little triangle. And you don't want to cut it too big because the hole will actually stretch out when you slide your hand inside like this. Okay, now, you can add some embellishment with other felted pieces, and I've got a little heart here, by just putting a little bit of tacky glue around the edge of the heart. And then gluing it to the middle of the glove. You can add triangles or stripes of fabric, whatever you like. And then I'm just going to position it there and press it, and then leave it to dry. Now, we've put some plastic lacing around the top of ours to pull them snug when wearing them. So what you do is go around the rim and cut short little holes into the wrist of the glove. And you can go back and mark these holes with safety pins so you can see when you're lacing your string through. Like so. And I've got one here that's already started. You can see I've got my safety pins all the way around. And I've already started weaving the plastic lacing through the glove. And I'm just going to continue on around. And there are so many neat felted sw er, sweaters out there for felting. You can get them in bright colors and soft colors and patterns. And what I plan to do is wear them with my jean jacket this fall when it starts to turn colder. This way my hands are free, but my, f or my fingers are free, but my hands are still warm. Okay, so I've got my lacing all the way around. And then I'm just going to tie this in a little knot. And I've got one here that's ready to go. Now, one last finishing touch is to add a little bit of sparkle with some glitter glue. And this, you can just go over top of your cutout designs, or anywhere, really. And you can use whatever color you like and make whatever doodles you want. And that really looks neat against the wool fabric. Let's take a look at our finished pair of gloves. For this pair, I actually cut strips of fabric that go all the way around the gloves. And then I added glitter glue dots. And I also cut extra notches right here and wove the lacing around this side and tied a knot. And then I did like I just showed you where I wove a piece of lacing around here and tied it in a bow. This creates a drawstring and then it can be really snug around your wrist. Our next project is a tartan pillow. Because the land is so rugged, people in Scotland were separated into clans. Each clan has its own chief, and all of the members have a common ancestor. Each clan also has its own colorful pattern or tartan for weaving cloth. For your pillow, here's what you'll need. I've got a foam core board, which is where we're going to build our pillow. I also have green, red, gold, and black fleece. On the black fleece, you're going to need about a yard. And on the other colors, you're going to need a little bit more than a quarter of a yard. All the measurements are on the website. Then I have pinking shears, which are zigzag scissors. And I also have some regular scissors. Don't forget to have your glue on hand and a ruler. And lots of push pins. Now, I'm working on a mat as well because it's a nice uh, cutting surface. Now the first thing you want to do is prepare your strips. So I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut, I need four two inch strips. My mat is marked in one inch increments so it makes it really easy for me to cut right along the line. So I'm going to cut two inch strips. This fabric happens to be 36 inches wide and all I'm going to need is four 
18 inch strips. So I'll be able to make multiple pillows because when I fold this in half, I have my four strips for the pillow. So I go along and cut all of my pieces out, save any scraps because we're going to use those for filling. Okay, now I'm all set. Now let's move our strips over to the side. Now in addition to my strips, I'm cut, so I cut four two inch gold, four two inch red, green, and black. Then I also cut four one inch gray, or a little bit less, and four one inch extra black and I will need an 18 inch square for the backing. Now what I do is I put, lay down my pattern and I'm, I've created my own clan. So I'm going to put a green and I'm just going right into the foam core, green, gold, red, black, then repeat the pattern starting again from the same end, black, red, gold, green. Then on all of my gold pieces I'm going to lay a thin strip of black, and on all of my black pieces, I'm going to lay a thin strip of gray. Now you can choose whatever pattern you'd like. So don't, you know, stick with what you're seeing here. Now the other thing you want to do is to take your gold, or I'm sorry, your thin strips, and put a layer of glue on each one of those. I'm not going to take the time to do that on all of them, but you'll get the idea when we start weaving. Now. I've pinned this with about two inches hanging off the end of my board and I just want that to be uniform down the side. Then I'm going to take my next color. Now since I started with green at the end, I'm going to start with green again here and I'm going to weave. And to weave, all we're going to do is put it over the first one, under the second, oops, I've got that popped out, over the next one, under over, under, over, and out. Now you want to snug that up really nice and snug up to your push pins. Then when you start the next row, which will be gold, I'm going to start by going under. This is really basic weaving. Flip this up to help. It's much easier to flip each one up and out of the way, because then you'll get it a lot snugger. And out. Keep pulling down. Now I'm going to build all of it, all the way down to here, leaving a two inch border at, as well as, it will know exactly that you're right if you have a two inch border at the other end. And make sure you really snug these pieces up. Then when you're all done, you want to go back and put a dot of glue under each one so that it's very, very secure. Now I have another one already here, so you can see I made a smaller one, same thing, but just one inch strips. And I've removed it from my board. Again, too, one other note, was on, on my other one here, just to bring this back in, I was putting a pin at either end here just to keep it secure all the way along as I'm going. Now once I've got it all done, then this is all glued, I can pull this off and I have my pillow. Now in this case, since it's a little one, I've cut a smaller piece of black. I'm going to lay my large one on top. And this is where you can use your pinking shears if you want a little bit fancier edge. And I'm going to, because fleece sticks to its stuff, it's really easy to just layer this behind it and cut right in the same spot. Now, if you cut on top of the other piece, it's okay. Don't worry about it. It's not going to ruin your pillow. I'm going to cut two sides here. Okay, and what I'm going to do, oops, that's one more cut right here, which will cut this corner off. I'm going to tie these pieces together. So I'm tying the front to the backing. Now if you have a long enough piece you can double knot it, but to be honest the fleece is really going to stay pretty strong. And I'm going to go all the way along the entire pillow until I have each piece knotted. So I'm knotting a black to the red, 
and so on all the way down the side. And it's as simple as that. Your whole pillow is simply knotting those pieces together. Now remember too, I told you all about the scraps you started out with at the beginning. Because we don't want to put a white pillow form inside here because it may just peek through. So I'm going to take any of these scraps and stuff them inside the pillow. So I do one side, two, three, and a little bit here, stuff it, and then finish. So let's take a look at our finished tartan pillow. Our last project is a Celtic knot. The original inhabitants of the Scottish Highlands were of Celtic descent. Celtic is an ancient language that is again becoming more popular with many symbols or letters featured in Scottish jewelry and crafts. Now to make our Celtic knot, we're going to use some different colors of lacing. We also have a lanyard hook and a key ring. Now, what we're going to be doing today is demonstrating the whole technique of what a Celtic knot is. Now, you can make it out of thread, you could make it out of yarn, you could do it out of leather or lacing like we're doing here, and it'd make a great ornament or even out of wire to make jewelry. So let's get started. What I've done is set up some boards with the design. It's actually a really easy knot, but you really have to follow. It's all over and under. And what I found is, is if you, instead of doing one loop of thread, if you do two colors of thread, it's easier to follow. So let's start here, and I'm going to show you the design. With my orange piece of, of uh, lacing, I'm going over and making a loop that goes underneath it and bringing it down. That's the one first side. Now, step one, my second piece is just coming down straight. Now, on the second step, I've taken my... A yellow piece, I'm going over the first loop, under the second loop, over this loop, under, over, under, and over. Remember what I said, under and over is the key to this. On my last loop, all I've done then to complete the knot is to take this last piece, which remember it came right here and came over, I've gone under that orange loop and come right out. And you can see you've got a Celtic knot or kind of like a pretzel shape in the middle. So let's make our own. I've got two colors of lacing here and I've started my green one, see with that loop going around. Now I'm going to take my orange one. Okay, I'm going to go over my first loop. See, I wanna keep my hands out of the way. Under my second. Pull that down, okay, so you see it over, under, over. Then I'm going to go under this loop. Then I'm going to go over this one, under the next one. Okay, so now we've created that other loop going around. Now I want to go over this one. That means I have to go under the next one. And over the last one. And when you pull it, you have a Celtic knot. Let me pull my pin out so you can see as the shape pulls down. Do you see the loops? So you have two loops and two loops. And then you just pull the knot to get that perfect shape. Now then what I've done is add some beads down to the bottom and in our finished one, which we have right here, I've done it with a triple braid. So what I've done is taken three colors and braided it so that we have one here and one here and again, it's just the exact same knot. It's that over and under, kind of the pretzel shape with the two loops, kind of a heart within a heart and then I've taken the ends down to the bottom and strung some beads on. Now all of these patterns and diagrams are on our website and I advise you to start with two colors. It makes it a lot easier. And that's the Celtic knot. And that's Crafts Around the World. Join us next season for 13 new countries and cultures and more fun projects celebrating the traditions found all around the world. Projects and ideas from today's show, plus hundreds of other kids' craft projects, are available on the web at craftsforkids.com. This is Program 1313.
A DVD set of all 13 episodes of Hands-On Crafts for Kids, Crafts Around the World, Series 1300, is available for $49.99, plus $6 shipping and handling. Visit craftsforkids.com to order. Travel to distant lands with Hands-On. Hands-On is sponsored in part by Elmer's Products Incorporated, manufacturers of a variety of adhesives, arts and crafts, and office products for use at home, school, or business for over 60 years. Elmer's.com Floracraft, the Dow Chemical Company, styrofoam brand foam, make it fun. Floracraft.com Styrofoamcrafts.com